it certainly seems to be that uh, Whitney, uh, you know, uh, is grabbing all the headlines. And, you know, it's weird. Everybody, I think, was seems to be like, I'm really shocked by the fact that Whitney died. Um, more so, I think, than other famous people that have died re- recently, which is strange. But yet I sort of had that first reaction, too, because I guess I thought there was a lot of media that spun that she had sort of cleaned herself up and... There was, you know, I think everybody was sort of waiting for the second sort of. But usually, that that's when you know people aren't cleaning themselves up is when the media is talking about it a lot. Right. Because I mean, I think we've noticed that the people that actually get sober do it anonymously. It's true. You know, most of our famous guests who have actually been clean, you right. haven't heard a big story about it. Right. And it's and it's yeah. almost like, it, it, you know, they're able to do it because they're remaining anonymous. They're not calling Oprah to tell Oprah how they're sober now. Right. You know, they're, um, and it, I mean, obviously it's really sad, sadder that she died in a bathtub and, you know, to go along with Jim Morrison and every other famous person that's died in the bathroom. Yeah. Don't uh, do drugs in the bathroom. Don't do drugs in the bathroom. That's the lesson. But it, 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 an idiotic remark that I thought we were talking about this on the drive in was Tony Bennett, you know, and I don't know why I'm expecting anything but an idiotic remark. I mean, he's an amazing singer, obviously, and he's a legend, but crooner, extraordinary. Yes. Right? And but he comes out and says, "Drug, you know, this is the reason why drugs should be legal." And we've had our own discussions on why drugs should be legal, but the, all the drugs she was doing were legal. Well, we didn't really know what she was doing. Well, right? the Xanax, the Xanax, and the alcohol, yeah. and the yeah, obviously not. But it's sad, and as a you know, also a famous director from the Ferrelli brothers, his son died this week. Yeah. And he was 20 years old, he OD'd. And, you know, there's a lot of parents out there that have a lot of drugs in their cabinet. And it's something to be very careful about. I guess every week that one more person dies, it just keeps making it more and more real. And, you know, I think some people uh, 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 sort of initially listen to our show and they're like, yeah, you know, these guys are just talking about a problem and it's not that big a deal. And as the weeks seem to go by with clean radio and we have more and more famous people dying more dramatically from drug addiction. And it's not like that old 60s, oh, they overdosed on quaaludes and whatever. But, you know, we're now seeing the effects of all these prescription medications out there mixed with alcohol and and illegal street drugs. And it's becoming really quite 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 endemic i mean we're seeing quite a lot of numbers and we don't even know i mean right and that's the you know i was talking to somebody about this yesterday and he looked at me like oh you're lying because you know and i said the problem with addiction is we really don't have great statistics yet you know this isn't like cancer treatment or diabetes where people go to hospitals and you could really diagnose them right we truly don't know the statistics yet yeah and uh, I mean, so, you know, but there is also a lot of hope. I think the thing about celebrity is that it gives a face to it. I also think a lot of this stuff used to be covered up. You know, Whitney Houston dying wouldn't have been released 20 years ago as a drug overdose. It would right. have been heart attack. Heart attack, right. you know, from diabetes or something. You know, right. they would have said something. <laughs> they made a story up somehow. And if people are listening, listen, there is also a lot of hope. And I mean, that's what one of the things the show is about is that there is so much hope that, you know, for every story you see, both of us, I think, see on a daily basis people's lives getting better, you know. And uh, so if you're out there, if you're listening, there is hope. Yeah, let's talk about the numbers that people can, number one, call yeah. the show and talk to us, share their own problems, or if they're if they're in the middle of a problem or problem with a family member, or they can share their story of how they recovered and how that can help other people. The number to reach us for that is 888-539-2980. That's 888-539-2980. You could also find us at on Facebook at Clean Radio. That's Clean with a K. We also stream the show live at cleanradio.com. Just click the live stream button. You could also click the live audio button and hear us and look at what Andrew's wearing tonight in his French Puri outfit. And uh, we're going painting <laughs> after the show. You and can the, certainly call your friends and let them know they can hear us on the Yeah, and the number again is 888-539-2980. We understand a lot of people, this is a, a hard topic to talk about, so somebody wants to call us on a private line. What's that number, Andrew? Yeah, we have, uh, for people that really have trouble and they want to get into treatment immediately and don't want to speak on the radio, you can call our direct helpline, and that's 888-601-6040. That's 888 888- 601-6040. Before we get to it, what gives, you know, I'm sure people are listening out there saying, well, why are you talking about it? What is your experience in the field? Uh, 22 years working in mental health. Um, I did a lot of work in acute care psych, which means really severe cases of people with psychiatric illnesses. 
along with substance abuse. Um, I own nine psychiatric hospitals in the Gulf South, um, and then I moved to L.A. in 2000. And over the last three or four years, I've really been concentrating on opening up new facilities here in the L.A. area. Um, and we're just opening up two new facilities in Washington State. So uh, we're, we're growing quite quickly and uh, bringing a lot of really innovative uh, techniques and ideas into the treatment uh, community. Very cool. Don't yeah. sound so excited. And um, <laughs> it's a lot of it's tiring what I'm doing. Yeah, it is tiring. <laughs> and we have a, actually a really exciting show. We have two past guests that have come in, and Valentine's Day is coming up. And right. I think that's a really hard. I think, uh, you know, in alcoholism and addiction, um, I, oh, sure I could move over to the other mic again. Yeah, we had a mic meltdown. Uh, I'm very confused about what's Your going mic's on. not working, mic's, Judah. My, my, my mic's yeah. not working. So you guys, this is really cool. You guys are going to be like you're like the romantic couple that you are, and you guys are going to share a mic. This is really Ooh. cute. Yeah. I call you guys the hippy-dippy love experts. <laughs> <laughs> and if you just tuned into Clean Radio, you're listening to Clean Radio Live. We're in the studio tonight with our returning guest, Orna and Matthew Walters. Say hello. 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 Happy to be here. This is really cute. Um, any Right off the bat, give us some Valentine's Day advice. Right off the bat. Well, you know, if you're in a relationship, we prefer the stay home model. Don't go out to a crowded restaurant. And what you could do is take turns blindfold. Bl one person gets blindfolded and the other person feed finger food and then switch. And it's This is super a family hot. show. <laughs> um, it's super hot. That's yes. it. That's, that's, the whole that's thing. great. Right? That, that appeals to Judah. <laughs> that he's appeals like, to me. No right? money. He's like, he's like, no great. money. I got yeah. some dips. Like, was, you were talking was... about, like, some chips and dip, and you're good. I'm good to go. I like that <laughs> advice. Yeah, but you got to do more than chips and dip. You oh. should cover the whole full palette of the sweet and the savory and the salty. And right. it's really fun. The coolest thing, and I'm going to share, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sort of... Uh, you know, spoiler alert, The really the best part is that it's just as much fun to be fed as it is to feed your partner. Because you're huh. really thinking about, well, what's the next flavor that you want them to share, you know, to be having? And it's it's such a great way to build intimacy. It's a great... I think, I think you guys look like you do this every day. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, like your husband's like, I can't wait to do this after right? the show. <laughs> and um, we are a show about addiction and recovery. You guys deal with a lot of people in sobriety, too. Yeah. And uh, what's your advice for them on? Uh, I, I think I mean it's safe to say that it's it, monogamy is not the uh, biggest thing in the programs in the twelve right. step world. <laughs> I mean I, that's a personal survey study I've done. It's probably in the world. In the world, yes. What's your What's your opinion to people when they say, you know, no dating in your first year or any of that stuff? Uh, you know, I, I think that's that's always a good idea until you can deal with your own stuff and you can. You can really feel comfortable with yourself. You can be authentic, and you're not um, you're not reaching out the other person in, from that place of, of vulnerability, you know, because we can really attach in that way when we do that. Hmm. Uh, you know, Monday tomorrow is International Self Love Day, and I, I don't I mean that in, the, in <laughs> you know any kind of weird been, way, right? Yeah, that's been my wow. day for twenty years. <laughs> Keep the windows closed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean that in any kind of weird way, like you're taking it there, Judah. But more that it's a chance to really really think of yourself because love comes from within it only come in america from this is international really it's international self-love day that just seems like such an american thing to me <laughs> yeah right like oh we're americans we love ourselves ah. no no but it's a, it's a it's a good day it, you're right it's like take time out for yourself i guess and yes i just want to say that this whole idea you know i i think it's really great for people if you are in recovery and i i like that year rule about you know really don't jump jump into something because you're really adjusting who you are in that space and you're discovering things about yourself and so what we like to say that a really great relationship happens when two whole and complete people come together, you know, then you can form what we call the 360 relationship. And a 360 relationship is two whole and complete people that are coming together to create this new entity. It's not, you know, it's the antithesis of that whole, you know, Hollywood Jerry Maguire myth, which, you know, doesn't really work out for us. So you if know? you're at like 340 and it's Valentine's Day, she Break it off. <laughs> Finger food, yeah, exactly. everything. You're at 340. What do you do? <laughs> I think 340 is pretty good. You can probably move forward with that. I think you if can you're move still forward. at 180, though, that's your problem. 180? Okay. Yeah. So there, are a lot, there are a lot of people out there that are listening, that are driving, whether it's they put their husband into rehab, whether it's they put their wife, their son, their, you know, some significant other. And this day is coming up. And 
What do you tell people about the hope? You know that their relationship is gonna that has the chance because I'm sure when people, Andrew, I'm sure you've seen this a lot. You know when people are married and they have to put their significant other in rehab. I mean that's really fearful. Yeah, I mean I think what's stranger is this whole idea of Valentine's Day and this that it's this sort of mythical, sort of uh, grandiose version of love. Like it's not based in reality or based on anything else. It's this sort of let's create a bunch of greeting card companies. And, well, yeah. And yeah. Uh, yeah. now you sound like my girlfriend who was telling me <laughs> this last night. But I mean, I like their initial comment, right? You guys initial comment of like really use it a time to express the true meaning of love and being with somebody, which is bonding. Yeah. And actually enjoying being with somebody. You, you know, love is a choice. It's, right. it's not something that happens to us. It's not something like a thunderbolt strikes down and I feel love, right? Love is something you choose. Well, that's it's, divorce. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> love is something you choose every day with your partner. Even when right. they're being and behaving in a way that, that you don't like, you can still choose to love them through that behavior. And and especially if somebody who's going through, you know what you said, Judah, they, they, they put their spouse into rehab and, and they're coming across this time. It's about it's about creating a loving space, creating a space of openness for them to be who they are, not needing them to change right, right now. Right, just being in that space of acceptance because see, actually, actually, I look at Judah and he's like, "How long I got to wait?" And I, mean, <laughs> like, like, I get that she doesn't have to change right now, but I mean, is it ten minutes? Is no, it, no. Andrew we're and talking, I, Andrew and I were, we're actually talking joking two the other day why addiction has helped my relationship is my girlfriend's got a great dog, this great Schnauzer, but and, and it, I love walking this dog. But part of the reason I love it all started with Andrew going, "I'm so bored walking my dog." He goes, "I go, I never am because I get the smoke." And, Actually, uh, I told you, I right. go, I, I bet you smoke, like walking the dog, yeah, I get to smoke. I get the smoke. And you were like, oh, that's it. You're and, right. Yeah. And now he feels guilty. Yeah. And he it's feels like, this tremendous uh, guilt. Yes. Because he's getting credit for doing something he loves to do, which is smoke. Right. And I, and I you which know. Which he's not supposed to be doing. <laughs> so, yeah. So but I he's go, getting, <laughs> he's getting like celebrated for it because he's fake walking the dog uh, for, to get the smoke. And my girlfriend is watching the show, by the way. Thank you. And uh, thank you. So so tomorrow, you're so you're, kind. You're going to get to walk the dog yeah. with her while you smoke. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but I think this is an interesting point because you know what, Judah, you don't have to feel guilty doing something that you enjoy doing, except for smoking, wow, that, which is I, killing. That, you. that is like wow. I, I, Although smoking is killing. That's you. like ten years of therapy. I just got in ten seconds. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, by the way, if you just tuned in, you're listening to Clean Radio Live. The number here is 888-539-2980. That's 888-539-2980. You could also find us on Facebook at Clean Radio or cleanradio.com. That's clean with a K. We're in the studio tonight with um, Orna and Matthew Walters, relationship coaches and singles who want to find love. Um, but I, let's get back to that question. What do you tell people? I get that. That's great. You know, you tell them to create a loving space to people that want to check their children or their significant others in but what what else do you say to them because that's probably got to be one of the most fearful things checking your loved one into rehab because you're scared you're going to lose them even though you already have yeah and I, I think you just put your finger on it which is they already have lost them right. and actually putting them in rehab is is an opportunity to actually regain them actually to get them back you know, so it's about it really, you know, all uh, some cliches are true for a reason. You know, if you love somebody, set them free. Right. You got to give them the space to go and do what they need to do in order to find that love for themselves, because, you know, so much addiction is driven by a lack of self-love. Now, I couldn't agree with you more, but I can't say I've ever experienced this this uh, event where women don't expect me to read their mind and know what they expect, like without me knowing what, what it is. Like that, every relationship I've ever been in, at some moment, there comes a time. You know what I love about where, these two, by the wait, way? Wait, wait, they're wait. so excited know, for they're, your question. My question, right? Because they're, they're just like, going to tear I, me I, apart, I mean, right? They're, right. They're tell me exactly yeah, what's they, wrong. Yeah. Right? Okay, so, <laughs> right? 44, I can't read women's minds. You've been sorry. married three times. I've been married three times. Can never get it right. So I've asked. You told and us. And if you ask, that's the worst thing you can do. And then you get it totally okay. wrong. Right. And so I would say, who is it when you were a little boy? Whose mind were you trying to read then? And why did wow. you take this on? It's a good question. Uh, I don't think I was trying to read minds when I was you know, a little kid. You know, there's, there's another thought, which is... We, yeah, and I wasn't trying to take it on. I just, you know, got married, and then right. women seem to ex have these expectations. Uh, no maybe luck. we should be talking to the women, right? Yeah. But, but the key is to realize in relationship that the other <laughs> should person... Should my ex-wives on the phone? <laughs> <laughs> it's realizing the other person is not you. Right. Right, and that's the mistake we all make in relationship. 
We think the other person thinks the way we think. We think they feel the way we feel, right? Oh, I like this, so you're going to like this, right? Mm-hmm. Or, oh, I want you to do this, so you're going to know that I want you to do this. And and when we let go of that myth that the other person in some way intuits and knows and, and is in our mind, right? Instead, we go, well, who is this other person? What do they want? What do they like? How would they react to this? Then we can start creating communication. Yeah, you know, I've been trying to tell women that for years. They just don't seem to get Andrew, it. Andrew's going um, through. There's right. a woman here. I don't know if you okay. noticed, but I'm in the room. And I don't, you know, I mean, honestly, right. it's like to say, oh, all women feel this way. I would say the women that you seem to be drawn to, attracted to, connect will with that. will <laughs> seem to be in this realm. But I would say that there are plenty of women like myself I do not expect anybody to read my mind, particularly not my husband. I will tell you what it is that I require, need, want, desire, right. and that, all of those. I think that's under D in the, the classified listings, right? Like, <laughs> no, but I think an important thing that to talk about is that, and I think what Andrew might be going through or what other men go through is in all relationships, you set up a dynamic. And then one day, you know, it's like you set up this dynamic of whether it's you're the supporter, you're this, you're that. And then one day when you want something back, you can't understand why it's not there but because you set up the dynamic. Well, that's exactly what we were talking about earlier is if you come into the relationship feeling whole and complete and not like your partner is somehow completing you, you have a much uh, more level playing field for success in that relationship because you're not looking for that partner to give you something that you feel you're lacking inside. Now, we understand that, you know, people who are dealing with addiction oftentimes feel like they are lacking something inside, like there is something broken inside them. I, you know, I used to feel unlovable. That was really... You got down to the core of what my issue was and and it showed up in all of my relationships. Nobody could love me enough because I felt unlovable. And until I changed that story inside of me, then I was able to open up and receive love from somebody. And I was able to receive it from this amazing man who's now my husband. That is pretty amazing. He looks like an amazing guy who's very excited about after the show. And um, (laughs) But one of the things that you're talking about which really struck me is they were talking about Whitney Houston last night. And I get it. Um, they were talking about like how I guess she was drinking and they were all at the pool or at the bar partying. And all I could think of was she was probably the loneliest person there, you know, as everything, all this stuff is. Because if you're if you can't find, you know, if you can't love yourself, you know, talking about self-love tomorrow in the healthy way, um, you, no matter what everybody does around you, it's not going to validate you or help you. Yeah, you know, and and I I think the thing to realize is is that wound inside isn't truth with a capital T, right? It's not who you are. We were raised and we're all raised by flawed people, right? People who are human, who who make our, our love conditional or their love for us conditional. And and sometimes those people make it so conditional we can never get it. Right. We feel like we can never get it. And and that little child takes full responsibility and says, oh, it must be me. I must be the one who's broken. I must be the one who's wrong. I must be the one who's not worthy. And so therefore, I'm never going to get this. Right. Mm-hmm. And so therefore, I'm going to act out all of these behavioral patterns that come from that. And the, and the realize on a on a much bigger level that that's just a story. And that's just on a certain level made up. Based on these yeah, it's flawed magical people. thinking. It's magical thinking, right? Yeah. And if you start realizing, oh, I'm not broken. Oh, mm-hmm. there's nothing wrong with me. And that's that's this whole self love piece, right? right? I don't have to change in order for my her problem to love is me. I point that out in the other person, and then <laughs> <laughs> they don't like that I pointed yeah. out that they are engaging in magical thinking. I think Andrew needs to go yeah. to one of your seminars, <laughs> and um, I really do believe that. This, I would this love is true. to. You I know, would like to hear what yeah. they say about this. Yeah. If I'm pointing out the Lack of uh, correct concrete thinking and and, and the fantasy magical thinking of the person I'm with and that upsets them. I mean, is that wrong? Should I not do that? I would. I mean, I don't want to say that that I would. I wouldn't. I would say that it's um it's much better when that person has that realization for themselves. So I and so just, a great I way. Should, a gr- I should be with them in fantasy land. No, no. A great way. <laughs> no, is to model for them. So that you start to do that for yourself and you go, oh, you know what? And then you share your experience from right. yours rather than pointing the, you know, whenever you point the finger, right, there's three pointing back at you, right? right. So right. if you start to model the behavior that you would like for them to take on, that's a great 
you know, sort of monkey see, monkey do thing that we do in relationship, right? Mm -hmm. So if you want your partner, you know, let's say if you want your partner to write you little love notes or something, right? You might start giving them some. Hmm. And then if you notice that they keep those around their desk, you might say, oh, you really like those little notes I wrote you, huh? Hmm. And they might say, well, yeah, I really do. And so you might say, you know, it'd be really great if I had some over to show on my desk, you know, or something, right? Right. So if you model the behavior that you want to be receiving, then that's a great way, you know, to just to not only um, support the relationship and creating intimacy, but it's also a really great way to take care of yourself and your own needs. You just gave the setup for about 4,000 comedians out there for a whole set of jokes. <laughs> By the way, if anybody uh, anybody out there that's listening, um, I got to tell you, do you, you know, uh, Matthew and Orna, Orna you guys actually, this seems to be working for you. And um, you guys seem blissfully happy. And, uh, you know, so anybody out there, oh, now they're kissing, uh, uncomfortable right. moment for right. the Judah Jeez. and the Andrew. And uh, thank you. Um, family show. Um, <laughs> how do people find you guys? Uh, our website is creatinglovonpurpose.com. We've got a, actually a whole free video training to go there when you sign up and, and you get inside. And there's all kinds of free articles and videos that really talk about all these concepts we're talking about. And how much does this cost? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. When, when is the first one? The, the first... Um, uh, semi, uh, the next one. The next one. Oh, the, we're, we're actually doing a, um, a, a global telesummit event. This is all online, so it's people all around the world. We're going to talk with 25 of the top experts in love, dating, sex, intimacy, and relationship. We open for registration on April 2nd, but actually you can go to our website now, creatingloveonpurpose.com. Get the free video training, Let Your Heart Rule, so you can get the love you want. And when you sign up there, you'll be notified about the global telesummit event, the Love on Purpose Revolution, which will be this spring. And is there like a classroom like type setting? Is there like a place you're doing this? Because I want Andrew to go, we, and I actually want to film this. <laughs> we actually right now do most of our stuff online. Um, so, uh, you know, if I could throw it, we also have a, a little Valentine's Day special going on. We've got a, a an online program we call Your Soulmate Blueprint, which is really about how do you get in touch with that that soulmate type of relationship? How do you create that? And if you use the promo code VD. Wow, that was the wrong. Yeah, that letters. is the wrong it's promo code. Yeah. No, it's, yeah. it's V Day. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, wow. Let me, let me get it right this time. It's V. You might be very sticky together. <laughs> v Day. D A Y 2012. V Day 2012. Sorry, and you I get couldn't let that no, go. You know. I mean,. <laughs> What's cool about <laughs> wow? What's cool about um, your soulmate blueprint is there are processes in there that is exactly what we're talking about. There's right. one about connecting to source, and there's a great one for transforming any negative emotion that we. Um, it's called reclaiming your power. And when you purchase the program, you actually own these processes. You can do them whenever you want, however you want, for the rest of your life. Put and them on they, your iPhone, your iPad. Very cool. We we got to get going out here yeah. for our break. Thank but, you guys uh, so much for coming in. Really um, appreciate it. Yeah, and we'll we'll definitely uh, and ever, everything that you're talking about will be on our Facebook page. It's Clean Radio on Facebook. We have a couple calls lined up, but uh, people should call in still. And and, uh, and on the other side of the, the break, show. we'll have Alex, Doctor Alex Katahakis, author of Erotic Intelligence. Um, call us. Just, yeah, call us at 888-539-2980. That's 888-539-2980. It's Clean Radio. Do you suspect a loved one is abusing drugs? Call Clean Treatment Center at 888-601-6040 for a free drug test and consultation. A treatment advisor is available to help you administer the test and answer any questions you may have regarding treatment and more. We are here to help. Call us today at 888-601-6040 or find us online at cleantreatmentcenter.com for your free drug test and the start of a promising future. Welcome back to Clean Radio. If you would like to join in on the discussion or are in need of immediate addiction assistance, call 888-539-2980. That's 888-539-2980. Or go to cleanradio.com. That's clean with a K. Now, back to Andrew and Judah. Wow, Clean Radio. Here we are. How's it going, Judah? 
It's going well. I think my mic was off. Yeah. I'm having a lot of mic problems tonight. This yeah. is really weird. Well, you know, you stay away from guys called Mike. Um, can you guys hear me? Am I good? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Introduce Boo, our, our that was guest horrible. Yeah, yeah, In the studio, the second, the second half of the show, we have Dr. Alex Katahakis, uh, author of Erotic Intelligence. It's sort of like very oxymoron type of thing. Uh, um, right. I'm joking. It's a great name for a book. And I actually read some of your book. It was really good. Oh, good. Yeah. So in right. the last few months I've seen you, have you read a portion of it? Yeah, I've been, the erotic part. He's having yeah. trouble with the intelligence <laughs> yeah, part. Yeah, that's why I thought it was an oxymoron. Right. And, uh, no, I'm joking. Um, it was a really just an amazing book. I encourage people out there to go get this book. It's called Erotic Intelligence. Um, we have a call. We'll yeah, get gonna, to you. We're okay. going to jump on the phone right yeah. now. We've got line two. We've got uh, Jessica from Long Beach. Jessica, welcome to Clean Radio. Hi. Thanks for taking my call. You're welcome. How are you doing? I was down here the show a couple weeks ago, and it's just very interesting that you know, now I have my own question for you. Well, let's hear them. What's going on? Um, well, it's not really about me, but... Um, you know, I got married a little early, like I was about 20, and my, you know, we're 25 now, my husband and I, and, you know, when we were younger, we had a lot of fun in our early 20s, and, but now, like, with the drinking, it just, it seems like he drinks more, and started kind of getting into episodes of kind of drinking to, into oblivion a little bit, and, Mm. Hung over a lot more, and I just feel like he's pulling away out of our relationship. And when I was when you were twenty, did, was drinking a big part of your relationship? Did you did the things that you did together socially? Was it around drinking? Um, you know, I was going out to clubs and mm -hmm. um, parties, but nothing, not like a really everyday thing until you know recently. Mm -hmm. um, maybe in the past couple years, it just seems his moved up into stronger and more and longer. And is it, are there other are there, are there drugs as well, or is it just mostly alcohol? Well, not that I know of, mm -hmm. but sometimes I feel like we kind of drink in the same capacity, but he's going somewhere else. Like He's like either more passed out or more right. drunk and... I just, that's why I'm like, I don't, you know, I've, I've tried to bring it up to him, but he doesn't right. really admit to anything else. Does he get angry? Um, sometimes, yeah. And then just says that it's nothing to worry about or it's nothing different than it was, but. It's famous alcoholic lines. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jessica, it's definitely, you know, you're, you're dealing with. What a lot of people see where people begin to have problems with alcohol and it's met with the initial stage of denial um, of the person that has the problem with alcohol. Um, and the fact that you're recognizing it and then he's not being able to hear it, that's very, very common. So you shouldn't feel weird about that. That's very normal. Um, well, and I think, too, like his father left when he was really young and from what his mom said, he was an alcoholic, but... Mm. He doesn't really have a lot of recollection of his dad, too. But then I was like, okay, well, if it's in the family, like, he didn't really, like, grow up with that. Is he still prone to it? And I think that's in the back of my head, too, is that something I have to right. worry about. Well, ge if genetically there's alcoholism in the family, there's a good chance that... Um, a better than average chance that uh, you know uh, he's higher at a higher risk for alcoholism, but that's not necessarily true. The other thing is is that um, you know there could be other things going on with him besides um, drinking. You need to think about those too, whether he's on a medication that you don't know about or whether he might also just be depressed. Um, I don't know what other life circumstances are going on. So he might be in the initial stages of self-medicating depression or anxiety. Um, all those issues you'd want to address and rule out, as well as, of course, um, make sure that all the drinking is under control and moderate. You know, how many? How much is he actually drinking? Well, sometimes like we'll have um, some beers, and then sometimes some cocktails. But then he's like doing more shots and kind mm -hmm. of starting to dabble with like scotch. Right. Well, when people move to liquor, when you know, when people move 
from wine and beer to liquor, that's generally a dramatic shift. If that's where they've gone in that direction, that they're moving towards um, a state of alcoholism. Because liquor, they want to get there quicker. Well, it, it happens more quickly. Right. And it actually happens. People that just drink beer, it's harder for them to sort of actually get an effect from the alcohol. They just sort of st- stay a little drunk, but they don't really get any kind of rush or relief from it. Um, and that's why you see you know, long-term alcoholics really move towards liquor. Um, well, and he's starting to, um, like, you now drink more on his own, like, if I come home from work, and mm-hmm. he's already drinking, and then starting to call in sick. So well, like, you're, no. you're mentioning all the classic alcoholic things, you know, you're, you know, drinking in private, isolating, missing work, uh, problems with the family, um, increasing the amount of drinking, increasing in the type of alcohol to more concentrated alcohol. I mean, right there, there's eight, eight um, classic symptoms of alcoholism. Yeah, there's also all the lying and covering up that, you know, I think your impulses or your instincts are good that he's got a problem. And so it's really important that you don't deny your instincts because that's when partners of alcoholics and addicts start to feel like they're going crazy. And the addicts will say, oh, you're making a mountain out of a molehill or you're imagining things, but don't let that wear on your self-esteem. That's really important. So what should Jessica be doing for herself? Well, I would recommend that she go to Mm -hmm. Al-Anon. I think you can get a lot of support in Al-Anon. You'll meet other people, women and men that are struggling with this same kind of murky place you're in of not knowing if what they're seeing is what they're really seeing. And so helping people um, help you set boundaries and really take good care of yourself so your self-esteem doesn't slide down with his drinking is important for your well-being. It just I think this is one of those, you know, when they tell you in the airplane, make sure you put the oxygen mm-hmm. mask on yourself before you put it on your child. It seems sort of you know crazy to go that way. But it makes sense because if you can't be in a position that you can help him, then uh, you're both going to fall into a trap that can be very ugly. So how do I, I mean, I can see that for me. And then what about for like what? I mean, I know I can't. I know he Are you asking like sort of like how do you intervene? I I can't ever imagine leaving him. I I I didn't hear her. What? Leaving him. him. Well, that's not even in the that's, cards, yeah, right? Yeah, I mean, that's... There's so much... Jessica, it's not as doomsday, end of the world, as often people present right. it as. There's many, many people every day that get help for treatment of alcoholism and drug addiction. Um, and they get better. Um, and they can live long, long, fruitful lives without having the effects uh, really destroy them. Um, what's interesting is that in the last few years... People have been intervening sooner and sooner in the process of addiction. So while it used to be like, yeah, he's drinking too much, but you know, wait till he gets a couple D- DUIs All and right. you know, and uh, maybe goes to jail, and then we'll have a talk with him about it. That's and yeah, and uh, you know, luckily he's he's with someone that sort of is recognizing these patterns early, and has an opportunity to have a conversation with him that might save somebody's life or his life or might, if nothing else, greatly improve his life and your life together. And Dr. Alex, let me ask you a question um, about Jessica. And I'm sure she, uh, I'm sure she's going through this right now, the feelings of inadequacy or insecurity. Mm-hmm. What, uh, go to Al-Anon is, you know, basic. What else? Well, I think you could get into your own therapy if you wanted to, if that was available to you. Um, there are all sorts of people that work with drugs and alcohol. There are pay-what-you-can clinics. But, I mean, I agree with what Andrew's saying. This is not about you leaving him. You're not, you don't have to go anywhere. But by you taking a stand, by you being strong and gathering information and getting clear about what you need, what he possibly needs, uh, you're doing yourself and your family a service. This is about keeping your family together. So I think I think you know just and this is me speculating, but um, having worked with a lot of families with alcoholism, um, Jessica, you know, uh, as you address your partner who's in denial of having a problem, the natural reaction for someone in denial to have is anger, and mm-hmm. and it, sometimes that anger is taken out on you, or at least appears to be taken out on you when it's really taken out on the fact that you're confronting them about the fact that they have a problem. Yeah, and that anger can come from shame a lot of times too, right? Exactly, right. right. Jennifer, why don't you take our 800 number and... and our we, 888 we, number. Your 888 number. And 
all these questions, you know, we talk about it with you for absolutely free. Any questions you might have. Yeah, we actually have a great uh, treatment advisor. I think Son right now tonight. Yeah. His name's uh, Joe, and uh, let me give you the number for him. Give him a call, and he can help you with uh, resources in your area. Okay. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, stay on the line, and they'll give you the number, okay? Okay. All right, great. Thanks, Jessica. Thanks for calling. You're listening to Clean Radio Live, by the way. Um, The number here is 888-539-2980. That's 888-539-2980. You can find us on Facebook at Clean Radio, K-L-E-N, and also at cleanradio.com. You can watch the show live. We're in the studio tonight. And what about our big announcement? Oh, our big announcement? Well, I think we should uh, at the end of the show, towards the end. Well, forget that. Okay, we'll be (laughs) on in New York. We're not not that good. In two weeks, we'll be on in New York. getting picked up by a station in New York. Yes, we'll be on. WWRL. Yes, and we'll be on in New York in a couple of weeks. It's very exciting. On March very 26th, exciting. with one of my heroes as a child, will be our guest. His name is Lee Steinberg, who mm. is the inspiration for Jerry Maguire. Right. And um, But tonight, we have an amazing guest in the studio with us. Tonight, we have a, a doctor, who, author of Erotic Intelligence, Dr. Alex Katahakis. So, Judah, I just want to um, tell you that I'm not a doctor. Oh, you're not. I don't not. have a doctorate, I'm so sorry. I appreciate I the honor. I saying doctor. that. I know, and you called Jessica he, he, Jennifer, I think. Oh, it's it's a Judas. Yeah, it's a. Did I call her Jessica? <laughs> it's, or, it's all part of the fantasy. Of oh, I did call her. I did call her Jessica. It was Jennifer. <laughs> no, it was Jessica. Wasn't I said Jessica. <laughs> Jessica Jennifer. It's J E. It's close enough. Your microphone's and, uh, not working. Okay. I'm a doctor. I got so you. in the studio I'm tonight with an esteemed <laughs> author, esteemed author and colleague, and all around great woman, but not so much for making me recognize that I said. Uh, Okay. No, I have to I say, just, I wasn't here last week, so I had to watch last week's yeah. episode, and it was uh, Judah and Dr. Co. Uh-huh. And there's two math questions on the show, both of which he was off by about 300%. Yes, I yeah. asked, but I asked them myself the questions. And answered them incorrectly. And answered them yourself. incorrectly. <laughs> and, uh, but that's for a whole other topic. Welcome to the studio. Thank you. And, uh, poor Judah, he feels beat up. Okay, no, so I don't. Judah. This is no, about yes. love and Valentine's. You know, you know, you know oh, right. can I tell you something? Yeah. yeah. I love myself. I and um, so I'm okay with any comments from, you know, sometimes insecure, low, low, low esteem people, <laughs> people wearing French Paris shirts and hats. And um, I'm, I love myself. Yes, you do. Talk uh, about your book. Okay. Uh, I'm a marriage family therapist, so okay. I'm a therapist. Uh, my book, Erotic Intelligence, is for people that are wanting to be sexual and sexy and erotic again, um, even though they've struggled with issues of sex and love addiction. So a lot of times people that are sex addicts, they are acting out compulsively, hiring prostitutes, masturbating endlessly, looking at porn. Why are you staring at me? I'm just looking. Uh. I just look at a glance. <laughs> <laughs> they, they feel shame. You know, they feel shame and their right. partners catch them and they kick them out of the house and um, then they feel really asexual and they don't know how to be sexual again without being triggered again. So erotic intelligence is meant to help people out. And so what is intimacy versus just sex? Well, I think intimacy is about a real connection with somebody. It's about being vulnerable, really letting people know who you are. And, you know, addiction is all about looking good. It's all about having a false veneer. So really unzipping the things that um, we're most afraid to tell people. Yeah, you're going to make that dirty, aren't you? No, no, he said unzipping. <laughs> uh, anyway, sorry. I'm incorrigible. Sorry. Get back to um, it. So it's, in, it's from that place of vulnerability, and I see it unfortunately all the time once people have been caught and they're in trouble and they've got to tell their partners everything it's through that vulnerability that they feel more connected more intimate more close more real Mm -hmm. and then the sexuality and the eroticism arises from that and so that's why it takes really time to develop a relationship and then add Mm -hmm. sex to have a really mature relationship right and And so many people do the reverse right yeah especially if they're love addicts they're they're like hello how are you or in the 12 step meetings yeah a lot of times (laughs) hey look we got another call let's take it we got uh, John from Fallbrook, California. John, welcome to Clean Radio. Hi. How are you doing just tonight? What's going on? I'm all right. I'm all right. Now I'm having a little bit of drama with the wife, and uh, I wanted to get you guys' opinion. Okay. Probably just a doctor. Kind of ha- I mean, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Just Alex would probably be the best on this one. No, Go no, ahead, John. No, no, I, I sliced my arm open pretty bad a couple weeks ago. Okay. How'd you do that? Yeah. Uh, it's a, a mirror in the uh, by the trash cans. That was an accident. Yeah, it was an accident. Oh, okay, oh. complete accident. Went to the doctor. The doctor uh, stitched me up, thirteen stitches. You know, it's pretty deep slice. Wow. Anyways, he gave me some pills for the pain. Mm-hmm. What were they? I don't even know. Uh, okay, I think they're Percocet. Um, Percocet. Okay. I think I don't know. 
Um, not really in too much pain, but I noticed that I'm still taking them. Okay. And a uh, wife is getting on my nerves, and I don't know. I just feel like I get more done uh, during the day. It's weird. It's just a weird, uh, a weird feeling about these pills that I don't feel like I'm addicted to them, but at the same time, um, I feel like I have a clearer head. It's not even like... Um, you might be what they call habituated to them, which is not addicted. So, um, how, I mean, how many did he give you? 20, probably? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, and you've been on them less than a week. So, there's no way for you actually to have developed a physical addiction to them yet. But you could still be feeling slight withdrawal symptoms mm -hmm. from the comfort that it sort of gives you. Like, it will give you like a shady sort of feel or soft feel about things. Um, yeah, and you, yeah. and you might be trying to hold on to that feeling. Um, that's a good sign to stop taking them. <laughs> <laughs> right. Stop taking them now and forget about that feeling. Yeah. Even if it means right. your wife nagging you. Yeah. Right. yeah. Well, I'm, yeah. I'm trying to understand. It is, feel high. That's well, it's, like, I don't uh, think, see, feeling pie is a very, uh, a undefinable thing, especially when it comes to things like opiates. We've become so extreme in our culture. We expect, like, you know, you're going to take one hit of pot and then you're going to be, you know, your arm isn't going to move and you're going to be drooling and laughing on the floor. Um, while, you know, in the 1960s, they thought maybe you might giggle a little bit. You know, so a lot of drugs have gotten a lot stronger. People now expect the effect of the drugs they take to be much more extreme. You're taking an opiate. It's um, a moderate opiate if it's Percocet. Um, it's not. It's in the same class, similar to oxycodone. So you're not dealing with something that's you know uh, uh, potentially harmless, but um, it has the potential to quickly build tolerance and become addictive, especially if you like it. I think Alex also wants to know what's going on with you and your wife. Well, I just thought it was interesting. You said the wife, your yeah. wife is kind of on your nerves, and I can't tell if she's on your nerves because of the yeah, pills no, that you're taking. Because of the pills. So she's nagging you about getting off of them. Is that what you're saying? She doesn't want, she doesn't want me to become, I guess, you know, pill, pill addict. Well, also, you probably don't recognize your behavior versus how you feel. Right. You know, with, with people that are taking prescription drugs, especially opiates, believe it or not, you actually tend to become more agitated um, to the people around you. It's a very common sort of reaction. Um, you think a lot of people think, oh, you know, heroin or opiates and you just sleep and not off on the couch. Mm -hmm. But low levels of opiates tend to cause aggressive and agitated behavior in the people that are taking them, um, especially early on. So, you know, you had a small dose of opiates. You cut your arm. Your stitches have healed. I'd go ahead and like how many do you, how many pills you got left? No, not much. Maybe one or, I think one or two. One or two. Just flush the last two. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, call us back next week if you're having yeah, a problem. Yeah, seriously, give us a call back next week and just yeah. to let us know what's cooking. Yeah, tell us what happens next yeah. week after not taking them for a week. Yeah. See if, yeah. like, your sort of normal personality returns. And, and I bet you if we asked your wife, she would tell us that you're a different person on these things. Especially she after tell. three or four days from get now. Get her some chocolate all your for Valentine's yeah, Day. Yeah, get her some chocolate. Yeah. No, feed it to her, according to our feed last guest. Feed it to guess. her, right. <laughs> Have her feed you chocolate and something reverse. Right? Okay. All right. And chocolate, by the way, re uh, releases endorphins just like opiates. So you get a little kick out of the but, chocolate. But I mean that. Give us a call next week just to check in and tell us how you're doing because okay. we, we just right. want to make sure you're okay. Okay. Thank you. All right, John. Thank thanks you. for the call. And uh, you're listening to cleanradio.com. You're listening to Clean Radio um, on News Talk 980 or on 760 KFMB, or you might be listening to us on cleanradio.com, streaming us live. We'll be on in New York in a few weeks on 1600 AM. And it's really exciting news. I'm excited about being on in New York. Yeah, so that means cool. you will be in New York, and I'll be driving down the street, and I can hear you guys? Yes, yes. you can, wow. yes. Yeah. Or you could be on your iPod. And, no, you, you won't be able to get away from us. Yes, it's <laughs> terrible. <laughs> right. Everywhere you go, it'll be. Well, actually, it's, it, it, a... it's the most excited people are our parents, because they'll of finally course. be able to right. listen to us on the real radio and go, well, and tell all their friends, I told you my sons were on the radio. Yeah. <laughs> There's something nice, though, about being away and hearing familiar voices. Yes. And like, I know those guys. Yeah, and uh, I'm, really, I'm, I'm really thankful you came in tonight. Um, Valentine's Day. What's your best Valentine's Day, you know, hand, you know, trick, secret, trip, uh, tip, advice? Really? Yes. 
Boy, that's a tough one because, you know, people get into the standard, let's go out to dinner, let's do the perfunctory flowers, you know, rose, etc. And sometimes those things um, can feel grating and wearing on people, I think. They feel mm. like they have to do it's it. It's a burden. It's, it's a burden, right? Yeah. So get creative. Do something you might not do. Say, hey, let's go for a walk on the beach or uh, let's go for a hike or uh, maybe let's just sit down and talk. We haven't really hung out and talked to each other in weeks because we've been so busy. So mm. really try and keep it simple and keep it real as opposed to going for the fanfare that can sometimes feel and what about the people that don't have a partner on valentine's day what should self they do? love that's buy yourself true. a gift <laughs> buy- yeah, yeah, I don't think that's bad. Do something that you like, wow. something that you've been wanting to do. Sure. Huh? Shoot it short. Shoot it scored a home run. Yeah. yeah. Can't get the doctor yeah. part right, but he yeah, <laughs> hits, but, it's the, know, it's the important it's answer. Dr. Shoot a bit. Well, I think a lot of single people feel maudlin on Valentine's yeah. Day. I used to. Right. You don't want to go out and see all those lovers, and they're all in a relationship, right. and you're not. So Actually, I like seeing there watching them screaming at each other. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <right>. <laughs> <laughs> but, see, they're all miserable. Right, see, make sure they're all miserable. there are so many expectations put <laughs> there on are. these days. Yes. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's hard. I mean, it's Christmas, too. It's like amazing. We're going through the roughest of the time. One and, of the and roughest Judas times. And Jewish. He and, still uh, has trouble still Christmas. struggling. Right? Yeah, I know. Go figure. It's guilt on guilt. And... Um, <laughs> I have guilt on guilt crime in myself. And wow. um, and so it's like one of the roughest, we're going through this rough time economy, all this stuff, and people are like freaking out going, I can't buy you this. I can't do this. Right. I can't even buy myself something right. for self-love day. Right. There's so much. They still got all the bills from the holidays. From the holidays. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're like a, not even a, a little bit over a month, and it's like there's so much pressure. Right. So if we get out of this idea of buying happiness and buying love and really mm-hmm. get back to or to ourselves and really sharing what's meaningful. So sometimes you guys are probably going to think this is corny, but sometimes just writing a note. No, you know, no, no, that's, that's great. No, I've or, always done the best yeah. with a note. Yeah. I got to say, or, I notes have always worked know, very well. A poem or something that. I've actually gotten is... yelled at for not writing the note. Oh, which okay. Is even worse. Yeah. I got to work on that. I hate my handwriting. You know, it's like. I. I you... But don't we have this problem with escalation? Like you write the great note the one year, and then yeah. the next year you got to write the even better you note. You got to write and... like the greatest truest right, ever I'm written. Like, then I'm like, check, check off like yeah. the next year. I'm this like goes to the way. This is my thing on, you know, it's like when you start dating somebody, you never take them to coy first. Yeah, that's a bad you, know, idea. you never take them to the or to people listening. You never take them to the most expensive restaurant. You take them to like Carney's. You know that should be every first date you should be at like the cheapest date. a coffee yeah. date, right? Because you only work your way up. That's right. It's like you know you go from a coffee to a piece of cake. Second date. It's great. It's a great <laughs> system. But you never go from like. Three hundred dollar restaurant because right. then you can't go down. Every we just down. lost our entire female <laughs> yeah. audience. Yeah, but it's true. But I did that true. one time. I did that one time. I took my first date. We're to gonna Koi. get our first hate and then mail afterwards, now. After Koi, I was like, "Where do I go from here? Where do you go, Vegas?" Right. And uh, you know, right picnic. now I'm gonna Let's go to Koi. A... They're not gonna let me in the door now. Thanks a lot, Jude. I appreciate and, uh, that. Uh, but first of all, you don't even know the person. Yes. You have no business spending that right. much money on them. Wow. Exactly. You don't. You I like one it. Isn't that great? Yeah. We have a woman in the studio. I have to say, I like Koi. You know, no, no, this whatever. isn't yeah, a knock you, on Koi. About but you what, if some, what if some rich woman wanted to take me to Koi? Then giddy up. Go. And, <laughs> and, 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 and then you woke up in the morning and you realized you had a dream. <laughs> yeah, um, right. <laughs> and, uh, um, wow. But, by the way. If there's uh, any rich woman out there that wants way, to take me to Koi, you can call Clean Radio. 888. I, 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 I promised that Andrew and I were looking for houses this weekend because we're looking to move in together. Oh, and no. Um, yeah, but no, we're looking Judas to build new, a sober uh, living. That actually, new fantasy. Oh, I see. We're that actually b- helps people. Mm-hmm. We're not, and uh, I have a friend. His name is Mike Durong. He's an amazing, um, he's an amazing real estate agent. And I told him I'd give him a plug. You can find him at mikedrealtor.com. He's an expert in residential real estate. Go to mikedrealtor.com. I can't believe I just did that, but I love this guy. And he's nice. been helping us out. And a he's lot been helping us out. And he says, always oh, shares. His name is Mike Durong. He goes by Mike D. He said one of the coolest things. When I moved out here, I had about five and a half years sober, and I, I came to meetings down here. And Mike was one of the first people I met. And you know, you, are you so? Uh, I don't know if you share that stuff. If you do, but um, I didn't just out you. No, 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 no. I'm not sober from okay. drugs and alcohol. Okay, but you know, like I've had he, other issues. She's so sober you, from being a doctor. <laughs> she's sober from being a doctor. But you know, a lot of times I think. It, there's a difference between the meetings you might go to out here and the meetings you might go to in New York or sure, in different that's what places. I hear, yeah. And out here, when you get sober in different meetings, there's so much like b- trumping people. Mm. And I remember when I got out to meetings out here, I was like, oh my God, did everybody shoot up out here? Everybody's got a tattoo in places I didn't know you can get writing. And <laughs> um, and Mike D used to share with me and he used to go, you don't have to use 
heroin to be a member of Alcoholics Anonymous. Mm -hmm. And I'd be like, wow, that's awesome. You know, sorry, Mike, for breaking your anonymity. Yeah, but, good job, uh, <laughs> and please don't sue me. But he was a huge help you to me. You'll offset the plug. And, no, that's and right. and, yeah, I just offset the plug. And he's a great real estate agent. Getting back to you, where do people find your book? Erotic uh, my intelligence. book can be found at Amazon.com or at my website, thecenterforhealthysex.com, under books and resources. Great. And I encourage everybody to call you. I think it's really mm -hmm. amazing that you're, because with so many people that we know, uh, you know, with, uh, what do you call it? The, you're the expert, Andrew. You know, the other, you know, when you I'm have alcoholism. I'm not the mind reader, though. And you, I can't hear you. I'm not the mind reader, though. But when you have alcoholism and your addiction, the other addictions that come with it. Poly. Yeah. Probably substance abuse. And I'm sure you find or that multiple a lot. addictions, multiple yeah. Addictions. Yeah, I mean, we see all the time people that are sober from drugs and alcohol who come in and they've been acting out sexually for the duration of their alcoholic sobriety. So sometimes 15, 20 years in AA, but they've been acting out and they be, you know, have to be new in SAA. So there's lots of cross addiction, lots of multiple addiction. I mean, how many people really have just one addiction? Not me. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's it's really typical that people are either you know eating, gambling, and having sex, or drinking. Judy just found out a new addiction like this past week. Which is what's that? Well, you can't really talk about it because it's embarrassing. But I have no idea what he's talking about. I don't either. They're um, not mind readers. People can call me silently. Like, yeah, tell he's them gonna get me in trouble. Uh, <laughs> the rich woman is taking me to coin my next week. My dog, <laughs> girlfriend gonna... walking a dog, and um, <laughs> but no, yeah, I mean, I think, but I would love for people to give you a call because I do think what you're talking about is the problem is when you're sober a few years and I, I, and you're sober six or seven years you have the shame that other things might be going wrong right and I think a lot of people get into a lot of trouble because of that shame and that guilt that they feel like they can't share it yeah it's embarrassing and we're seeing a lot more women coming into treatment now for sex and love addiction and mm -hmm. boy women really um, I mean they struggle badly with this problem and they've got a lot of shame about talking about it too tell them not to it's sort of hot yeah, I'm joking uh, <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, we got one minute left yes. what's the most important things we need to say in a minute um, I think we should leave this to Alex. <laughs> I, in relation to this conversation, no, in relation to anything. I know there are a lot of people Valentine's out there that Day are. And I think the most. I think the most important thing to say is that it's crucial that everyone consider that they love themselves. They set good boundaries for themselves. They stand in their self-esteem. And they stand in reality also because that's part of what makes somebody moderate, living in the gray areas, living in the middle. And that's the hardest thing to do. That's part of being sober. And that's laugh great. about things. And it's okay to laugh yeah. about things. And let, I think just let people know there's a lot of help out yeah, there. Yeah, there is. Anybody that's going through a rough time right now, if you're hopeless, if you're there, there is a light at the end, at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, check mm -hmm. us out at yeah. cleanradio.com yeah. or Facebook slash cleanradio. Or 888-601-6040. You can call any of our treatment advisors anytime. This has been Clean, Clean Radio. The and discussion we will see you continues on cleanradio.com. Yeah, next week. Yes. Be fun. See you then. suspect a loved one is abusing drugs? Call Clean Treatment Center at 888-601-6040 for a free drug test and consultation. A treatment advisor is available to help you administer the test and answer any questions you may have regarding treatment and more. We are here to help. Call us today at 888-601-6040 or find us online at cleantreatmentcenter.com for your free drug test and the start of a promising future.